Well, thank you and good morning, everybody. I thought technology people work nights, not mornings. So it's nice to see so many of you here this uh, bright and uh, early sunny day in Minnesota. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Star Tribune today, a subject I've become very passionate about uh, over the last eight months. First question I'm often asked is, why did I get involved? It's a challenging environment for newspapers, as everybody knows. And there are many things we can do with our time, so why the Star Tribune? The real answer is very simple. This work matters. I can't imagine a civil society that doesn't have a functioning news organization. I don't think bloggers and citizen journalists will fulfill the needs of our democracy. Edited professional journalism has long had a role in our country, and that I think it will continue to have an important role. The question, though, isn't so much about the journalism. The question is about the business side. I'd like to start today by telling you a little bit about where the Star Tribune is today, both in terms of our journalism and in terms of our business. After several very difficult years, going back to 2005, the Star Tribune completed its financial restructuring in September of this year. I'm happy to tell you that today, the business is profitable, our balance sheet is strong, we have $40 million of cash on our balance sheet, and we expect growing profitability this year. There are a couple of reasons for that. The first is the restructuring helped us get back to an economic structure, an expense structure in our business that was based on market pay. For a long time, the Star Tribune functioned as a virtual monopoly in the marketplace. And as you know, monopolies present many challenges to the long-term future of a business. Monopolies stifle, stifle innovation and creates a whole series of expense structures that can't sustain a company once that monopolistic situation goes away. And that's what happens in the newspaper business. Unfortunately, we had to go through a restructuring to get that done. But today, we have 1,100 people working, paid well at full market rates, both in the technology side and the journalism side, the advertising sales side. We're profitable, and this year, so far, is significantly more profitable than last year through the first three months of this year. But we've also got great momentum on the journalism side. A number of our journalists have won awards this year already. Just this week, Lori Sturdivant, one of our important editorial board members, received a Lifetime Achievement Award. Three of our photographers were recently recognized. Chris Sears and other journalists in, in the business department were recognized for excellence. Our investigative team has done great work this year and continues to, to unearth the stories that are important for us in this community. One of the things you're going to see us focus on over the next several months is the gubernatorial race. I know the election of the next governor is important to you, but it's very important to everyone in the state. One of the things that I've learned by being involved at the Star Tribune is that the governorship is the tr only true powerful position in the state. If you've watched Governor Pawlenty in recent times, he's wielded massive power. That's by constitution and by personality. If you're not yet paying attention to the gubernatorial race, I encourage you to do so. This week, there's the Democratic you know, DFL convention in Duluth where the Democratic Party will choose its endorsed candidate. There'll be a primary in August that will include Mark Dayton, Matt Antenza, Susan Gardner, and then the endorsed candidate. Pay attention. This matters. On the Republican side, Tom Emmer and Marty Seifert are vying to see who can be the most conservative Republican in order to win the endorsement. We may well end up come September with the general election that has a, a far left candidate from the Democratic Party and a far right candidate from the Republican Party. Perhaps 75 or 80 percent of Minnesotans think those two choices wouldn't be the best thing. But what happens in a, in a, in a party system where endorsements carry the day is that the most left wing part of the Democratic Party and the most right wing part of the Republican Party often carry the day. If you're happy with that system, don't do anything. If you have other ideas in mind, if you're part of that 80% in the middle, get involved and get involved soon. Now, it's the role of the Star Tribune to shine light on issues like that. 
and our journalists are doing it every day. One of the reasons that we exist is because that kind of work is fundamentally important. We sell ads so we can do news. But if we don't sell ads and we don't sell subscriptions, we can't fulfill our mission. Now, a friend of mine and a great Minnesota businessman, Bill George, wrote a book a couple of years ago. It's called Authentic Leadership. I'd recommend the book to you all. In that book, Bill addressed the real goal of a corporation. And in Bill's view, and I share the view, a corporation has to serve five constituencies. First, it has to serve its customers. Second, it has to serve its employees. Third, it has to serve its shareholders. Fourth, it has to serve the vendor community that it participates in. And fifth, it has to serve the community at large. I got involved at the Star Tribune because I think the Star Tribune can effectively serve all five of those constituencies. So for us, our customers are both readers and advertisers. Our employees are dedicated people. They've put up with an enormous amount of tumult over the last several years and have hung in there. It would have been very easy for these professionals to go to many other places, but they've hung in there and stayed. The company must serve them as well. Shareholders. The shareholders had a couple of tough years. In fact, the shareholders got wiped out in the financial restructuring. And our new shareholder base were the people that loaned the money to our previous shareholders. They're doing much better, I'm happy to report. Many of our vendors are here in the room today. And we have a future that I think you're going to want to be part of, which I'll share with you in, the minute, in a moment. And I've already talked to you about the community. So when you evaluate the Star Tribune, evaluate it the way we do. How are we serving our customers, our employees, our shareholders, our vendors, and our community? So the question really before us is, how do we go from here? I mentioned that monopolies sometimes stifle innovation. Here's what happened at the Star Tribune. We spent an awful lot of time trying to hang on to an old model. I can tell you those days are over. When we saw opportunities to invest in new technologies, the first question we asked was, how will it impact our existing model? There's a famous story about the Boston Globe. The Boston Globe was offered a chance to invest in Monster.com, a significant position for $1 million. They turned it down because who'd want a cut rate online employment service attacking their classified business? That happened in vertical after vertical. Cars.com, CarSoup, Vehicles.com destroyed the classified business in automotive. Monster and others destroyed it in employment. Craigslist and eBay destroyed it, the, 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 the popular for sale side of the classified business. And newspapers across the country, and our newspaper was no, were no, was no different, ignored those trends, tried to hang on to an old model, partly because the, we were arrogant. We were the Star Tribune, or we were the New York Times, or we were the Boston Globe, or the Philadelphia Inquirer. We could see the internet coming from a long way across the prairie. It was like a big storm and you could see it coming. But we didn't get out of the rain, we got wet. We got drenched and we almost drowned. Fortunately, we didn't drown. Today, there are more readers of the Star Tribune than ever before. Now that might surprise some of you. When I talk about the Star Tribune, because at the Star Tribune, we're distribution method agnostic. I don't care whether you read us in print online, mobile, soon on your iPad, that's up to you. Our job is to generate the news and other information you can use and deliver it to you the way it's convenient for you and you get to choose. 